I wanted to share with you how I'm using Google Forms to help me get students to self-assess and to turn in work. So this first form I created after setting a robot research homework. So the work was very, very easy and straightforward actually. They had 10 questions about robots. Underneath each question they had a link to a website or an online newspaper article. And then underneath that they had to put a quote, the quote that the quote should answer that question. And that was from the website. Underneath that they had to put the quote into their own words. And lastly, they had to put in the MLA reference, so they had to cite properly. This was really, really an exercise just so that they could get some more practice with citing using MLA and also so that I can check for understanding. So the Google form I'm going to get them to fill in as they, as they walk into class. It's very easy. They put in their name. I completed the robot research MLA form, yes or no. Um, I use MLA citation style for all my references. I put yes or no. Sometimes I put yes, no, sometimes, maybe. Um, but for this one, even if they didn't use it once, it's still a no. Okay. I use easy bib, always, sometimes, never. So again, this is so that when a student, maybe I find out later through the form that they found it really difficult and they couldn't answer it properly, they say they've never used easy bib. I can pull them aside. I can show them how to use that. MLA referencing skill zone. Oh, I need to change that question slightly as I have missed out an L and this one I've chosen to do as a grid form the reason I chose to do this as a grid form is I've never done the grids before what I'm going to start doing is um, having a whole long list of these underneath each other and it'll be like a tick box um, relating to a rubric so for actual assessment work they can check along and see what they think they've completed um, usually I just use multiple choice but I think for the rubric style this will work very well I'll show you in a minute um, I found it difficult. So this one, I didn't tick the required question box. So here, students who answer difficult, very difficult, they can fill this in. Um, leave blank if you found it easy. Again, you can do the questions where you skip to the right answer. So if someone had ticked difficult, it will skip there. But I wanted to give students the option to fill it in because sometimes they might find it really, really easy. Um, and they might still have a comment to say. So they might say, oh, I didn't because of easy but really helped me. Or they might give me some sort of tool to provide to other students. I must put a link in my bibliography, even if I only use ideas from the site and don't directly quote yes or no. Again, I can really check for understanding. I can even use this as evidence in a staff meeting to say, look, students aren't understanding about bibliographies. We really need to push this bit of information on them. So this is a really good one to help me. It is important to cite information I use probably because hopefully they're all going to give me fantastic answers for this, ones that I can use in classes, ones maybe I can turn into displays. And again, it really helps me check understanding. Now, this is my favourite part. The link to my completed work is, and they put their link to Google Drive. Yes, their Google Drive folders are organised very well. They have, e I have grade 6, 7, 8, um, and 9. In there, I have each student's folder. In there, they have a unit folder and then homework. But sometimes students change the name of it or they make it, they muck about to make their homework in all different bright colours. And so I can't. It's not so easy to locate. This is really, really easy for me because when I have the spreadsheet generated after finishing this, um, I will just have a straight link to each of their bits of work and can mark it from there. So it's very, very good. This is another bit of work I've done. So this is for a fi assessment. And what I've done is I've actually put a screen grab of the rubric right into the Google form as an image. Then underneath, put kind of loose questions where they can go up and they can refer to the rubric um, to make sure they get those top marks. Um, what I am going to do, as I've said, this is you know, a class that really, really like writing a lot and really like showing off what they've done. So this will work well for them. What I'll do next time is I'll make sure my rubrics are kind of more of a checklist. And then I can use a whole row of grids. So it will have each checkpoint going down and they can just tick yes, no, or sometimes. And that will help me determine the mark. I think students will like to take ownership of their own grades and they like to show off the work they've done. Also, I think it um, makes them feel a bit more accountable if they have to do that. So it's just some of the ways I'm using Google Forms. I'm finding it really, really, really useful. Um, I'm experimenting with a lot of different methods. Um, and I will write a blog post soon about what has worked for me and what hasn't. Thanks.